morning everyone sorry a bit of adjusting this is not good <laughs> sorry i'm a little bit late had a bit of a bit of a nightmare this morning but there we go and if you can't tell i don't really know what i'm doing when it comes to um <laughs> adjusting and putting things right okay Mega, mega rush. But there we go. They're joining me in church this morning. Um, morning, Mary and Marie and Edwina, Roz, lovely Avril. Virgin, I can't get this thing to move and make it taller, which is not helpful. Sorry, everyone. Whew. Rachel. Rachel and I were having this conversation about how we're all so calm leading up to prayer and then literally in like the first half an hour that you're getting ready, it's just manic. But there we go. Morning all, morning, morning, Joan. I've probably forgotten and missed some people. Morning, Rach. I was just talking about you. Mike, great to have you with us. And Julie. I'm sweating. <laughs> hey ho. It all goes wrong. That is completely right. There is also a blackbird trapped in the church somewhere. So um, if I suddenly go offline, it's, it's attacked me. So um, if we could um, pray that the bird doesn't disrupt, disrupt prayer, that would be really great. Because, yeah, I'm a little panicky over it. Morning, Keith and Anne, Sandra. Morning, lovely Jude. My glasses are steaming up. Whew. Okay. Right. Morning, Hilary. Ah, oh. it's so lovely seeing everybody's names popping up, and I think sometimes we feel a bit daft saying morning, everyone. Nice to have you here, but um. Yeah, it's just, it is really lovely. So I'm just going to recenter myself <laughs> and um, get ready. I don't know why I'm laughing because it's not even funny. Right. Okay. Are we all ready? I'm really tempted to say, are we sitting comfortably? Okay. So today is Monday the 13th of July, and this is the last week in the series on the early church, and is, and is about prayer, which is good, obviously. <laughs> For the past five weeks, we have explored what the first Christians can teach us about how we love one another through justice and hospitality, love the world through learning and mission and love God through creativity. This week, we finish with our sixth practice, how we love God through prayer. Okay. So we'll take a moment to pause, which we, I certainly need. As I enter prayer now, I pause to be still to breathe slowly and to recenter my scattered senses upon the presence of God. As I draw near to you, God, would you draw nearer to me? Teach me to pray. Lord, speak. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. I rejoice in God's power today, joining with the ancient praise of all God's people in the words of Psalm 33. Let the whole world, world fear the Lord and let everyone stand in awe of him. For when he spoke, the world began. It appeared at his command. And that's taken from Psalm 33 verses eight to nine. Today I reflect on an easily overlooked moment in the life of Jesus' closest friends. After the extreme events of Jesus' death, resurrection, and his return to the Father, 
what would come next for the men and the women who would go on to build the church. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going. Then suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who had been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. The apostles, then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those presents were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James, Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. So that's Acts 1, verses 10 to 14. What would it have been like to see Jesus return to the Father? If I'd been present, I would have probably been astonished, staring up at the sky just like the disciples. Did they perhaps feel wonder, fear, uncertainty, elation, or all of the above? I think I would have been torn between the temptation to stay and prolong the experience and the desire to just run and tell everyone about it. Earlier in Acts chapter 1, Jesus, potentially anticipating this conflict, gave his friends one simple instruction to follow. Go back to Jerusalem, wait and do not leave yet. After everything they had been through, these men and women listened and obeyed. What was the last thing that God asked you to do? Can you remember? How did you hear him? Was it something you read in the Bible or an instruction you received through prayer or prophecy? Have you done it? We now ask, we ask you to remind me, Lord. Now we'll pause to pray over that um, and see, see if he can tell us if we've done as he's asked. None of Jesus' friends were alone. Together they witnessed Jesus' accession. <laughs> together they obeyed his, in, his directions and together they prayed. Who am I together with? Who encourages me in my pursuit of Jesus? I ask you, God, to fill them with your Holy Spirit and give them your instruction for today. And when I feel alone in my faith, please help me to find others I can encourage. As I return to the passage, I open my ears to hear your word and my heart to yield your will once again. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood behind, beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those presents were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer along with the women and mary the mother of jesus and with his brothers that was taken from acts 1 verses 10 to 14. there's a little um a little story from the chap who um has done this devotion on the lectio 365 he says a friend of mine had told me of her first experience of constant prayer Unlike Jesus' friends, she was reluctant to join in. 
She avoided the first 24-7 prayer room that her church hosted. She found talking to God difficult and had questions about prayer. When she finally walked into the space where her community had constantly sought the Lord day and night, she was shocked to discover that she was not there to tick off a dry duty, but to meet a person, the Holy Spirit, waiting to teach her. That first prayer room became her classroom. It ignited a passion in her for Jesus and for prayer that altered the course of her life. So, um, that actually really struck a bit of a chord with me. Those, um, those who know me well enough will, will know um, I've been coming to Mags for about seven, eight years, but um, prayer was something I was incredibly reluctant to do, um, especially in front of people. Um, I tried and tried and tried, but I just the words just wouldn't come out. Um, and at the beginning of lockdown, I was like, nah, I'm not doing no lives. I, don't, I, d I wouldn't even get up in front of church. I think I did it once, and I was petrified. Um, and then um, somebody said to me, you will, by the end of lockdown, will have done a live. And I'm, yeah, whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, I, don't, I don't usually hear from God. I tend to hear from him through other people, sort of confirming confirming which is obviously him talking to me but then they they confirm it um in other ways um and um gary was meant to be on prayer one evening and he was a bit sort of not feeling too great and was a bit like oh, i don't really feel like doing it um and i felt um felt a little prompting i suppose um well it wasn't really little it was like a big shove on the back um saying go on you give it a go you you'll be able to do it so um I did, and um, that was the first time I ever prayed out loud, was in front of all of you guys, live on Facebook, which was just, like, incredible. I don't know, yeah. <laughs> um, but I have found that he, um, he does give me these promptings to really step outside of, of my comfort zone, like, like, ridiculously step outside. Like, stuff that I couldn't ever imagine I would ever be doing um but i suppose that's um that's what happens isn't it um so yeah i just wanted to share that with you because i just thought how how appropriate that <laughs> that was today's story it's, but yeah okay so back to the app and wittering about me <laughs> okay jesus i'm sorry for the times i have not obeyed you I hear the challenge to give myself fully to obedience and to constantly seeking you in every situation. Holy Spirit, I welcome you and I commit myself to following your direction today. I thank you, Lord, that when I am not sure what I should do, Psalm 119 reminds me that your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. I listen to your word today. And the closing prayer father help me to live this day to the full being true to you in every way jesus help me to give myself away to others being kind to everyone i meet spirit help me to love the lost proclaiming christ in all i do and say amen okay i've just remembered that i've forgotten to do the simultaneous sip but um that's probably because i don't have a drink because i left it in the car because I'm so disorganized this morning, but there we go. Um, I'm just going to have a little read back through the messages. I did notice, Sandra, I think you'd put a prayer up, so um, let me just make sure there's nothing else. Do, do, do. I'm even singing. I don't even do that. What on earth's going on? <laughs> so Sandra's asked if we could pray for her friend's daughter, Hannah, as she's having a spinal punch biopsy today okay so lord we lift hannah up to you um we pray that her um spinal punch biopsy goes really well today um and that re the results of what she wants to hear um we pray for the hands of the people that are doing the procedure on her 
Um, and we just pray that it goes really, really well and that she's not in too much discomfort afterwards. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Oh, you lot are just so lush. Listen to all your lovely messages. Okay. And hi, Joshua. <laughs> Had to just wave to him. Don't get to see him, my lovely godson. Okay. Anyone else got any more prayers? I do have a very low battery on my iPad because somebody was playing games on it this morning. <laughs> it's just been one of those mornings. But hey, excellent. Um, okay, so don't forget tomorrow we're open for drop-in prayer. Um, we've decided to change the name. Um, church is all geared up, ready for you. Um, hopefully the bird will have disappeared before then. Um, and yeah, so um, uh, who have we got this evening? I think it's Jane. So that would be lovely. Jolie's what? A, oh, <laughs> hi, Jolie. <laughs> Apparently he's waving at the phone saying, hey, mum. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, guys, we have an absolutely blessed day. I'm going to finish up some work here and then head home. So, um, yeah, take care. Thanks, everyone.